The aim of a college education is to teach you to know a good man when you see one. There are two lives, the natural and the spiritual, and we must lose the one before we can participate in the other. We have to live today by what truth we can get today and be ready tomorrow to call it falsehood. A man with no philosophy in him is the most inauspicious and unprofitable of all possible social mates. The union of the mathematician with the poet, fervor with measure, passion with correctness, this surely is the ideal. It would probably astound each of us beyond measure to be led into his neighbor's mind and to find how different the scenery was there from that of his own. A man has as many social selves as there are distinct groups of persons about whose opinion he cares. He generally shows a different side of himself to each of these different groups. If you wish to upset the law that all crows are black, you mustn't seek to show that no crows are. It is enough if you prove one single crow to be why. The prevalent fear of poverty among the educated classes is the worst moral disease from which our civilization suffers. Each of us literally chooses by his way of attending to things, what sort of universe he shall appear to himself to inhabit. There is no more miserable human being than one in whom nothing is habitual but indecision. Your hopes, dreams and aspirations are legitimate. They are trying to take you airborne, above the clouds, above the storms, if you only let them. The lunatic's visions of horror are all drawn from the material of daily fact. Our civilization is founded on the shambles, and every individual existence goes out on a lonely spasm of helpless agony. Whilst part of what we perceive comes through our senses from the object before us, another part and it may be the larger part, always comes out of our own mind. Most people, probably, are in doubt about certain matters ascribed to their past. They may have seen them, may have said them, done them, or they may only have dreamed or imagined they did so. Action seems to follow feeling, but really action and feeling go together, and by regulating the action, which is under the more direct control of the will, we can indirectly regulate the feeling, which is not. The greatest revolution of our generation is the discovery that human beings by changing the inner attitudes of their minds, can change the outer aspects of their lives. 